Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Center and I'm back with another gardening project. So today I am fertilizing. We're going to be fertilizing all of our roses, all of our flowering perennials. We are also going to be pruning some of our flowering perennials. Um, I already went through and pruned all the cosmos. We're going to do some of the mums. We're going to do things like some of the salvia. And then we'll just work our way through the beds. If we see something that needs deadheaded or pruned, we will prune it. But we're going to start by putting out some fertilizer. This is my first time with this type of fertilizer. It's called Rose Tone. I got it because, yes, Laura from Garden Answer uses it for all of her roses. She said she also uses it for flowering perennials, so that is what I'm going to do. Last year, I did fertilize my annuals, but this last year was my first year in this garden. And so I didn't really have any uh, perennials that weren't first year perennials that I didn't fertilize when they went in the ground. So this is my first year that I need to actually fertilize things that are coming back, like my coneflowers and my gara. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So it says to put about a third of a cup all along the grip line of the plant if we can get in here. It's resealable. I don't think you're supposed to break into it, but oh, I guess we need to cut in between here. There we go. Just like a little thin membrane it had to be sliced. I was wondering how it wasn't just, you know, open, but now I knit. So when you're fertilizing plants already in the ground, like this rose, you want to go ahead and put the fertilizer along the drip line. So the drip line is if there's a rain where the water will naturally drip off the outside edges of the plants and hit the ground. And where the drip line is, is also where the roots um, are that are growing. So like right, right in here, we're gonna go ahead and put some fertilizer. We're just gonna do that all the way around the plant. I'm going to try to do it every two weeks, which is what's suggested. We probably won't do the rest of these perennials every two weeks. We might do them every month, every two months. We'll see. See how they're flowering. The bar especially is just a spring flower. Baby, get out of this. So as you're putting this in, you do want to scratch it in. I'm gonna get my little hand rake, but essentially you're just gonna rough it into the ground and then water it. You're just gonna roughen up that compost, making sure that the fertilizer gets down into the ground. It doesn't just fly away or sit on top. Now, of course, if we had seeds or baby plants like we do up in some of the other beds, we need to be more careful about scratching things in. We do have some little seedlings in here, so I'm pulling out to scratch in those things 
But like I said, those aren't as important as like my roses um, for fertilizer. Watering it all in definitely helps, though, keep the fertilizer from going away. Um, we also did just water these strawberries that I planted up this morning. My my little uh, little shepherd's hook is not winning. The strawberries are winning, so if you need a different hook. But that is this little bed now. Before I move on to prune these cosmos, all I did was I followed the dead blooms back to where the bloom stalk met the plant and I just snipped them snipped them right off the plant and that will just help instead of one bloom stalk to shoot off several bloom stalks to make the plant much bigger and bushier which is great I want the cosmos to grow up and fill in this area around the comb flowers um, and all mingle together especially because the Laura this is only its first year it was in the ground last year but I planted it late summer and they were very little. Um, so they look great for their first year coming back, but they should get big and beautiful next year. They should get three or four feet tall, but they are only spring flowering. So we definitely put some annuals and some home flowers and other things in here that will fill out. But that has nothing to do with fertilizing or pruning. So just saying, I want these cosmos to get big and bushy and beautiful. So there you go. On to the next part. And I am going to put you guys on fast forward unless we have something specific to talk about. So let's work our way through this little bed. And then um, my alliums are either dead or dying. I think they're having a nitrogen deficiency. Some of them might be able to be saved, but most of them probably just aren't going to be. Uh, I've been waiting for this rose tone to come in for a while now, and it does have nitrogen in it. The other thing is I just got my fish tank set up, and fish water actually is very rich in nitrogen. So I am, I've am i been uh, watering my plants with fish water. It's great for your garden. But I hadn't thought about that specifically to help the alliums. I've been using it on my big plants. So I'm going to fertilize the alliums. Now I'm going to get some fish water do a water change on the fish tank and water everything, water everything in with fish water and fertilizer. So hopefully we will have some big, beautiful blooms in a couple weeks on some of these things and maybe the onions will live. One more thing before I put y'all on time lapse. This is one of my mums from last year. I planted out in the garden after fall in its pot. I have four of them that lived I really planted them out this spring. I should have done it last fall, right after they bloomed. Um, but four of them still lived. I had two big ones. This is one of the big ones. And I think four little ones. I only lost two. That's pretty good. Either way, I planted them in the landscape. And my mom told me last week when she came over that in the south, we want to prune our mums back every week, every two weeks, whenever they're getting big until after the 4th of July. Otherwise, they can move too early. And as a first-time gardener, I did not know that. So I will be pruning the mums back today as well. And then just coming in and dead headies and stuff like this little miracle. I'll leave that one for another day or two. But I do have to be careful. I have a bunch of little seedlings in this bed. But when we come in for the mum, Basically, she said you just want to go down about two inches, and you can see, well, I can see, there are little blooms all over the top of this. So, you leave those on, apparently they'll bloom too early. 
we're gonna go ahead and give it a, all a haircut. Okay, so here we are at my fish tank. So as you can see, I, well, they're probably hiding. They don't much like um, me being this close. I have Tetris and some Corydoras. I just got new angels. So I've had this tank set up many times before, but since moving into this house, there's my angels. Just got it set up uh, a couple weeks ago, like a month ago. And, you know, you have to cycle a tank. Well, you might not know. If you know about fish, you just cycle a tank before you can put fish in it or they won't live. So we had to cycle it for about a month, which means I've only had the angels for like a week, maybe, which is why I'm just starting to be able to use the fish tank water. Um, it is, and I'm still doing frequent water changes on it. So I actually have a large python, um, water attachment, which if you know anything about fish, you probably know what that means. But for those of you who don't, it's just an attachment that hooks up to my faucet so that I can put water in or out of the tank without having to move buckets around and physically take the water in and out. But because I want to be able to put water in my watering can and I've been using the large python attachment, it's very large. So it's a little hard to do with my watering can. But I have this two gallon watering can. This is the main one I use. And so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and get some water for my happy little plants. So feed one end in the tank, one end in the watering can. Use the little pump here. And there we go. So now we just gotta make sure that both ends stay in their respective cans until you are done. And then you take this one out. If you don't have fish, if you're not planning to have fish, then this is just fun for you to watch or you can skip this part. Obviously you probably have if you don't have a fish tank. But if you know someone who has a fish tank that wouldn't mind you even getting some water occasionally. My mom said when she lived in Colorado, um, there was a kind of fish fish store, I want to say. I, I'm not exactly sure what she said, but I would imagine it was a fish store or aquarium kind of place that gardeners could go to with empty cans, like five gallon buckets, like the one I'm sitting on. And they would give you fish water for free as they cleaned out the tanks. So since I'm still cycling this tank and getting it ready for these fish to be happy, 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 <coughs> I'm doing this quite often, so I need to take at least 10 gallons out a week, more like 20. So that's five to 10 watering cans. So I just come and do this until I have watered everything I want to water, and then I put water back in the tank. This little hose, I just ordered it on Amazon. I had one before water cleaner it has a pump. My old one has gone missing. I would guess it's gone to live at my brother's house because while well, I have this 50 gallon tank, he has several large tanks. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. So now we'll just lift this out. It will drain. 
we can put it back in once it's drained. And it even has a clip that you can use to clip onto your watering can or onto the tank to hold things in place. It's supposed to go on a bucket, but you know, watering cans are technically buckets. So I am going to go put this water on my little, there we go, on my alliums, and we will see if it helps. Can't hurt at the end of the day, even if the nitrogen isn't strong enough to help, um, water is good. So let's go. All right, y'all. So we are over on the other side of the garden and we have lots of little vinca babies in here that I'm still letting grow. So I don't want to step on them. But we're gonna go ahead and prune the salvia. I hate to do it because he's looking beautiful, but we want to prune him now so he gets big and bushy, bushy, bougie, bushy, and even prettier later on. So we're just gonna come in here. We're gonna follow the stems down and we're gonna cut about a third of the plant off. That one had some spiders on it. So I'm not touching it with my hand. I almost died. trying it. I know growing peonies in the south is a bit of a challenge, but we've done some research and hopefully they will do well. And I did an entire video on planting peonies in the south and everything I've learned. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link below. Oh, my dogs can see me from the backyard when I stand here. They're like, Mom, let us out. We're locked up. I know, sweeties, I put you there. I locked you up. No, see, it isn't so. I did transplant a couple iris over here that I got off Facebook Marketplace. So I'm just giving those a little extra water. So I just put them in yesterday. Obviously not all of them. The white ones I got last year off Facebook Marketplace 
There are some pink ones in here I bought from Rex, but these blue ones, those I got yesterday. Um, so I'm very excited to see. This one actually has a bloom. If he'll bloom or if they won't bloom until next year, but we are all done. I make my way out of the garden. So, you didn't know, clumsy. So, that is it. That is how I am fertilizing my garden. I'm going to be doing the roses at least every two weeks with the rose tone and my fish water. Um, like I said, I do my fish tank every week. Um, I'm only gonna be fertilizing every two weeks. So I try to hit everything else with the fish water on the off weeks. Things like these flux glove in here and all the iris and glads. Um, that way everything does get fish water, but every other week. Um, I might not do the rose tone on all the flowering perennials every two weeks, but I will definitely do the roses. And we will see in those monthly updates if it makes a big difference because you can definitely tell the roses on this side of my yard in the sun, they are loaded with blooms. We even have a couple blooms. Whereas the ones on this side, they do have blooms and buds, but they are not nearly as loaded as the other side. So my, my goal is that hopefully fertilizing them will help them to perform better. So hope you liked this video. If you did like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, show your mom. I will see you in the next video. I'm going to go sit on a flat surface and not fall for a while. Bye. Come on, Biddy.